In these problems, we're dealing with something called relative frequency histograms. And you may have done frequency histograms before, and that's a way of making a bar chart that describes a set of data. You divide the data up into chunks, and the bars show how many pieces of data are in each chunk. So for example, with this set of data, you've got numbers that range from the 50s up through the 90s. You might wanna know how many numbers are in the 50s, how many in the 60s, how many in the 70s. This is um, uh, a set of test scores from a geometry class. So you could see what grades people are getting, how many A's, how many B's, et cetera, on a traditional grading scale. So that's a histogram, uh, a frequency histogram. A relative frequency histogram is almost the same as that, except the height of the bars isn't the number of data points. It's the number of data points divided by the total number of data points in the set. So what you're actually getting is a percentage of the whole group of data. So the size of the bar is a percent of, of the whole number of data. Let me show you how this works. In this first problem, we're given this big data set. There are 25 scores here, and we're being asked to figure out which one of these graphs is wrong. Uh, usually in a histogram like this, you'll have all the bars for the various ranges clumped together in one chart. In this case, they separated them out, and we're supposed to find the one where a mistake has been made, the one that's not graphed correctly. To do that, we'd want to take the steps we would go through to make our own histogram. We want to rewrite this data first from lowest to highest so we can easily see how many members are in the 50s, how many in the 60s, etc. And then we'll take that number of data points in the 50s, number of data points in the 60s, and divide each of those by 25. And that should give us a decimal that will give us the height of our bar. When you're dealing with this much data, it's really easy to make a mistake. And I think a spreadsheet is a good method for maybe uh, reducing that. So what I've done here is I went ahead and added, oops, come on. I added all this data in, I typed it in in a spreadsheet. And the good news for me was that when I got to the end, I was at cell 25. So that means I did get the correct number of data points. Uh, I might've made a mistake in here, I don't think so. Um, we're gonna assume this is accurate and go forward. Um, they're all out of order though, but this is where the power of spreadsheets really comes in. I'm, I'm selecting this column by clicking on the A at the top, and now I'm going to go to the data menu and just choose sort. Now I've got them all from lowest to highest. So I can quickly see, let's see, there are four members in the, in the fifties, uh, and the sixties, that would be seven. And let's see in the seventies. Looks like I have eight, and in the 80s, three, and the 90s, also three. Okay, so that's the first step. I've, I've sorted the data, or the first couple of steps. I've sorted the data, and I've counted the number of members in each of these groups. Now I need to take this number and divide it by 25. So I'll do that over in this column, and I'm going to use a formula here. So I'll type in equal sign to start the formula. I'll click in this cell with the four in it. And then I'll type in a slash for divide and 25 because I want to divide by the total um, number of data points. And that gives me 0.16. So that looks right. Now I'm going to use the power spreadsheets by just copying and pasting this. And it should understand how to change the cell to get the right number. And yeah, very good. 7 divided by 25 is 0.28. So that looks right. Let's go ahead and do the same thing down here. This should end up being a little bit more than 0.28. Good. And there, and there, okay. So now we've got the height of each of those bars and it would be pretty simple to make a graph from this. In fact, I could even do it here inside this spreadsheet. But for our problem right now, we want to find the, the one that's incorrect. And I'm just gonna glance at these. Hmm. You know, the one I'm suspicious about here is the one for the 70s, because I remember that Hmm. Let's let's take a look. The 70s was 0.32. Yeah, and this is definitely not 0.32. It's below that. So it looks like this is the one that's wrong. You may want to double check the rest of these, but I think we've got the right answer there. Let me show you another kind of problem. And this one's pretty simple. Here they've built a relative frequency histogram for us. And they're just asking to find the frequency percentage of an interval. And the interval they're telling us about is from 1.5 to 
what that means is we're looking at this block in our bar chart. And this is why a relative frequency histogram is kind of a convenient form, because these numbers here, these decimals, well, you can read them as percentages. And that tells you what percent of the total data set is this chunk. So if I just look at the top of this bar and go over here, I, I end up at 0.11. If I convert that to a percent, I get 11%. So this interval is accounts for 11% of the data in this data set. And that's really all there is to that type of problem. All right, we've got one more here. So here we've got another set of data. This looks like uh, 20 data points. And we're being asked to find the, the correct histogram. So I think we should take those steps to build um, a histogram uh, in the spreadsheet. And so what I've done, I think I set up another sheet here. Yeah, so there's my data. I typed that in. Again, I when I finished, I was at 20, so that looks good. And let's go ahead and sort this. So we'll select the column again. We'll go to data and choose sort. There we go. And we'll take a moment to remind ourselves what the intervals are. So this is a little different. We want one to three, four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 12. So there's three, a range of three in each of these data points. So one to three would be to here. So that's nine in that first one. And then four to six is going to give us one, two, three, four, five. And then seven to nine is going to give us three. And 10 to 12 is going to give us three. All right. So we're looking for, now what I would do is divide all these by 20, but I can see already we're going to have this general downward um, slope to the graph. The, the first interval is the highest and it just decreases from there. So I think I can take a shortcut here. The only one that does that is this one. And let's just verify that these numbers are right. So we're a little bit above 0.4 there. So let's go back into our spreadsheet and take this nine and divide it by, oops, got to grab the cell first and divide it by 20, which is our total number of data points. Yeah, we got 0.45. So this looks like it's matching correctly uh, to this graph here. If you wanted to, to double check each of these bars, go ahead and, you know, copy and paste that formula again, and you can verify that that's the case. So that is a little bit of work with relative frequency histograms.